Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. So it's our very first lab. We're finally gonna start getting our hands dirty with AWS. And in this lecture, we're going to learn all about identity access management. As mentioned in the last lecture, this is one of the most important AWS services because this service gives you access to control uh, permissions to all the other services and to also create users, groups, and roles. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here I am in the AWS console. And if you look up here, you'll be able to see your regions. I know I did cover this off in the last section of the course. Um, I would always suggest using US East uh, as your main region, Northern Virginia. Like I said uh, before, the reason for that is this is where all the new products and services are launched first. So this is always the most up-to-date region. This is also the region that goes down the most. Uh, so if we want to find identity access management, just click up on services. This will open up all the different services that are available for Amazon Web Services. I know it can be a bit overwhelming. Like I said uh, in the uh, section two, don't panic. Um, no one person knows all of these services inside out and only a small fraction of these services make up the Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam. Now we're looking for security. You can see it here, it's got the little shield. So security, identity, and compliance. And what we're going to go ahead and do is click on Identity Access Management, and that will take us to this splash screen. And you'll be able to see in here that this is the landing page. Now you've got a sign-in link. This is the link that you can send to your users. It's simply your account number, then .signin.aws amazon.com forward slash console you can actually go in here and customize it so you could do an account alias of a cloud guru if someone has already taken it however you're going to um, you know it's a universal namespace so you won't be able to take it so i'm going to say a cloud guru 2019 god knows if this will actually be available no someone has stolen it from me maybe i'll take 2020 so 2020 hit create Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I'm, all right, I'm going to do 2020 Ryan, something like that. No one would have taken that. Um, so there we go. So this is now change that URL. And this is actually a DNS change. So this is a um, publicly accessible URL that people can go into to sign into this account. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is activate multi-factor authentication or MFA on our root account. And you might be thinking, what is a root account? Well, a root account is just the user username um, is the email address that you first signed up with with AWS with and when you log in using the root account you have what I would call God mode you're able to do anything inside of AWS now for that reason you pretty much don't want anyone to log in using the root account you want to create um, you know a whole bunch of users and a whole bunch of different groups and put those users into groups and you also want to secure this root account because it does have God mode access on it so what you want to do is enable multi factor authentication. So if someone steals your username and password, they will not be able to log in without multi-factor authentication. So to enable it, we just click in here and go to manage MFA. And it says you are now accessing the security credential page for your AWS account. This is account credentials provides unlimited access to your AWS resources. So just go ahead and hit continue. And in here we can see the MFA, multi-factor authentication. And all you need to do is click on active MFA. And in here you'll get the uh, three different types. You've got virtual MFA, you've got a U2F, a security key, and you've got other hardware MFA device. I would just use the virtual MFA and you can download the Google Authenticator app and you can do that on the Google Play Store or on the Apple App Store. So just type in Google Authenticator. Once you've downloaded that, go ahead and hit continue. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and hit click here, show QR code. Now, what I would do before you uh, open that app is I'd take a photo of this QR code and store it somewhere safe. That means that if you lose your multi-factor authentication device, so if you lose your phone, for example, so long as you have access to this QR code, you can always re-enable MFA um, and you don't have to worry about contacting AWS's uh, support team. Okay, so once you've installed Google Authenticator on your phone, you'll see a screen that looks similar to this. You might not have any authentication codes in there. Um, all you need to do in order to add one is to hit this little plus symbol and then go ahead and hit scan barcode. And there you go, you can see this is my lovely view from our London office. There's a whole bunch of Star Wars stamps and all I need to do is then scroll this down and have a look at the QR code. And that has now added uh, the new MFA to the bottom of my uh, iPhone screen, which you can see here. And then all I need to do is go ahead and enter in my MFA codes in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. It's 537 
four. And then I'm just gonna wait for this MFA uh, thing to change. And my MFA code's about to change, which is why it's gone red. And now I'm going to type in the new one, which is 770 and then 626. And then all you need to do is go ahead and hit assign MFA. And you can see it now says you have successfully assigned virtual MFA. The vir virtual MFA will be required during sign-in. So go ahead and hit close. And then you'll come back to this landing page. Notice in here, you can um, change your password. This is to change your password for the root account. In fact, everything here is for your root account. So you probably wanna come out of it. Just go ahead and click on dashboards and you can now see that we've got a new green tick. We've activated MFA on our root account. Before we go in and get more green ticks, I just wanted to uh, point out up here that the region is global. So whenever you're doing anything inside identity access management, such as creating users or groups, it's on a global basis. They're not locked down to particular regions. You're not creating a user in Northern Virginia and then having to create the same user in Australia. So just bear that in mind as well. So the next thing we wanna do is go in and create an individual IAM user. So let's click on that and go ahead and manage our users. I'm going to go ahead and add my user. And my username is just going to be my name. So Ryan.Krunenberg is what I'm going to put in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my AWS access type. Now, what we're using right now is called the management console. So the AWS management console. You can also enable programmatic access. So we're going to enable both just for this user. Now we're going to use programmatic access in the EC2 section of the course. EC2 is just uh, virtual machines. Um, so that is coming up, but we won't cover it off in this section. But I do just want to show you what happens when you enable pr uh, programmatic access. You're going to be creating an access key ID and secret access key, and you'll use these to interact with the AWS console. In here, we've got our password. I'm just going to do an auto-generated password. And in here, it says require a password reset. The user must create a new password at next sign-in. So not only does it auto-generate a password for that user, it's also going to make sure that they change it when they first sign in. Next, we're going to go ahead and add our permissions. We haven't uh, created a group yet. Um, so it's going to say add user to a group. Uh, let's go ahead and create a group. And this group I'm going to call in my group name, I'm gonna call it uh, developers, so developers. And my developers really need administrator access to AWS. And this is where we add our policies. And if it's got this little um, AWS logo here, it means it's an AWS managed policy. Um, so we want to add administrator access. Now you can add a bit based on um, different job roles. So in here you can see the type, job function, and then you've got AWS managed. Manage. Try scrolling to the bottom. I can guarantee you it's going to take forever. That is that how many that is how many policies there are. Um, so we're going to do administrator access. But if I was to type in something like billing, you can see a job function is in billing in here. Or if you've got your database administrator. Database administrator is a job function. So there is a number of different job functions to save you time. If you wanna know a list of all the job functions, just type into Google IAM job functions and it will um, give you the different types. So let's go ahead and create this group. We're creating the developers group and we're giving them full administrator access. That has now created our group and now we're going to add this user to our group. And we're gonna go ahead and hit next and we're gonna go ahead and create our user. That has now added our user. In here, you'll see that we've got our access key ID uh, and our secret access key. This is for our programmatic access uh, to AWS. You're only ever gonna see this uh, one time. Um, so you can just click here and download a CSV file. So you see that's downloaded down there. Um, store that for later. We will go through and probably create an entirely new user. Uh, when we get to that section of the course. And we can also email login instructions. And if you click on that link, it's going to open up your mail client and email them login instructions as well. And if you wanna see your user's password, just click on the show button, which is off to the left of the send email link. So let's go ahead and hit close. We now have our user in here. So we've got uh, Ryan.Krunenberg. He's a member of the developers group. Uh, and nothing else has um, been added. If we go back to our dashboard, we can see that we've created an individual IAM user, and we've also used groups to assign permissions. I just wanted to quickly show you um, a bit more into policies. So we 
added this administrator access policy to the group when we we're creating the group. If you want to see more about the policy, just click on this little down arrow. In here, this is JavaScript object notation or JSON, which we were talking about before. Uh, and it basically is um, a whole bunch of key value pairs. So this is the version of the policy. This is the statement. We've got our square brackets. And in here, we've got our curly brackets. And we, again, we've got more key value pairs. So these key value pairs are under the statement. Um, so this is what we call nesting inside JSON. So we've got effect allow. The action is a star, so a wildcard. So we're saying allow, and the action, we're allowing anything. And on which resource? Well, we're allowing anything. So this is the most powerful uh, administrator, or this is the most powerful policy that you can have in AWS. You're saying allow you to do anything with any resource within AWS. So this is administrator access, or as some like to call it, God mode. So let's go back to dashboards. We've created um, an IAM user. We've created a group. Uh, and then the last thing we want to do is just apply an identity access management password policy. If we go ahead and click on manage password policy in here. We can now say that we want our minimum path passwords uh, length to be like 12 characters. We want one uppercase letter. We want one lowercase letter. Uh, we want at least one number, one alphanumeric character, etc. In here, we can have password expiration. We can prevent our password reuse. And we can have um, that the password expiration requires an administrator reset. So you can change in here uh, all the different password policies. I'm going to go ahead and just hit apply. And if we go and click on our dashboard, we now have five green ticks. So we've achieved five out of five. Now, in case you're wondering where is my actual password that I need to send to my user, if you open up that CSV file, you'll be able to see in here, here's the password that's been auto-generated. Here's my access key ID. I want you to think of this as just like a username that we're going to use to programmatically access the AWS console. And here's our secret access key. Again, this is just like a password that we're going to use to programmatically access the AWS uh, you know, ecosystem. And then we've got our console login link. So all you need to do is send your user um, this console login link, their username, and their password. If for some reason you lose that information or you didn't save it, click on users, and then go ahead and click on the user in here. And then you can actually just click on their name uh, and in here you'll be able to go in and change their security credentials by clicking up here. So we've got our security credentials in here. Our console password, we can go ahead and hit manage and we can actually just set it. Um, so we can uh, create our own custom one if we wanted. Um, we can auto generate a new one uh, and we can even enable or disable the console. And likewise with our access keys, if you've lost your access keys, because uh, I have shown you my access key ID and secret access key, straight away what I'm going to do is my, uh, make inactive. Um, because anyone who basically uh, has access to your access key ID and secret access key could use your AWS account. So make sure you never share that. Now with your access key ID and secret access key, you can never use this to log into the console. You can only use the console password. And again, if this uh, access key ID and secret access key doesn't make a lot of sense right now. It will make a lot of sense uh, later on in the course when we actually go ahead and start using it. So I'm just going to make it inactive. In fact, I'm probably just going to go in and delete it for now. And we'll go ahead and provision it later. The very last thing I want to show you is roles. Roles are a way for one AWS service to um, go ahead and use another AWS service. So we're going to use this in the EC2 uh, section of the course where we're going to allow our little virtual machine to talk to S3. Let's go ahead and just create a role. So we're going to hit create role. Uh, in here, we're going to say choose the service that will use this role. So I would like to, uh, it's going to be EC2 because that's what we're going to use in the very next section, well, in two sections on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And then in here, all I want to do is type in S3 and because we want S3 full access, we're going to use an AWS managed policy. Again, it's got the little icon there, which means it's an AWS managed policy. You can create your own policies, which are customer managed. We're not going to do that uh, in this course. It's beyond the scope of this course, but it is definitely possible. Let's go ahead and hit next review. And the role name, just give it a unique name. I'm going to call it S3 uh, underscore admin underscore and then access. And I'm going to go ahead and create the role. So that role has now been created. You can see it in here. And we're going to use it not in the next section, but the section after that. 
Okay, so what have we learned so far? Well, we've learned that IAM is universal. It does not apply to regions at this time. So when you create a user, you're creating that user globally. Same when you create a role or when you create a group. We learned that the root account is simply the account created when you first set up your AWS account. It has complete administrator access and it's always using your email address. So, so that's sometimes called the root account email address and the password that you configured. We also learned that new users have no permissions when first created. We had to give our user, Ryan Cronenberg, uh, permissions. And to do that, we created a uh, administrator access policy. And we assigned that to the developers group. We also learned that new users are assigned an access key ID and secret access key when first created. They use this to programmatically access uh, the AWS ecosystem. And again, this is completely optional. You can just say, okay, I only want, um, you know, uh, console access or uh, I want programmatic access. So those are the two different types of access. You can have one, uh, you can have the other, or you can have both of them at the same time. So that's console access and programmatic access. We also learned that the uh, user access key ID and secret access key are not the same as the password. So you can't use the access key ID and secret access key to log into the console. You can only use it for programmatic access. And I'll show you what the programmatic access means and how it works later on in the course in the EC2 section of the course. And remember that you only get to view the user's password, their access key ID and secret access key once. If you lose them, you're gonna have to regenerate them. So make sure you save that CSV file in a secure location. Always set up multi-factor authentication on your root account. Remember your root account has God mode. So, um, you know, if someone hacks your uh, email and they can do a password reset, you're gonna be screwed. Um, so you always want multi-factor authentication. Uh, the great thing is setting up multi-factor authentication on AWS is super simple. All you need is a smartphone and you just need to download the Google Authenticator app and then you can uh, set up uh, multi-factor authentication, which we saw right at the start of this lab. And then you can create and customize your own password rotation policies. So we uh, went in and we made sure our passwords, you know, had 12 characters. They had a uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, a number, and then a special character. So that is what we've learned so far in this lab. In the next lab, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a billing alarm. This will tell us if our AWS account is going to go over a certain threshold and give us an alert. So if you've got the time, please join me in the next lecture. Thank you.